The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What must be believed to receive the gift of eternal salvation? If it is believing in Jesus, what do we believe about Jesus, and what do we believe in Him for? Is the assurance of salvation a part of what needs to be believed? We will tackle these questions today on Grace in Focus, and we are glad that you've joined with us today. This is the radio broadcast and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We are located in North Texas. You can find out more about us at our website, faithalone.org. Or you can send your question for consideration on this broadcast by emailing us, radio at faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. And Bob, I see you got a question from Brittany. What does she have to ask about? Yeah, she says, uh, I read your article and you stated... Now, is this your article or my article? This was me. Okay, okay. You stated you have to believe in salvation that never ends. And I believe what she's saying here is I argued that you must believe in the promise of everlasting life or irrevocable salvation in order to have everlasting life. Yeah, the issue is, what do we believe in Jesus for? What right. is it, you know, that we believe he's a good guy, that he's a miracle worker, that he's born of a virgin, that he's coming back? What is it that we believe in him right. for? A lot of people would say it's DDR, the deity of Christ, the death of Christ on the cross for our sins, and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead bodily on the third day. And if you believe in his deity, death, and resurrection, you're born again. Um, But we don't say that. We say that what you specifically have to believe is in the giver, who is Jesus, for the gift of God, which is everlasting life. John 4.10, John 4.14, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, etc. You can't simply believe that Jesus has given me a start, (laughs) and I've got some kind of initial salvation, but whether I keep it or not depends on me. I've got to persevere. And and this is related to, you hear people say, believe that he died for your sins. Right. So I believe that he died for my sins, and now if I'm a good person, I might make it. Right. I mean, how many Roman Catholics believe Christ died for their sins? Yeah. In the conference this last year, I pointed out that in the military, when I was a chaplain, I had a Mormon chaplain and a Christian sciences chaplain both tell me that they believed that Jesus died for their sins. Yeah. I would say Catholic, Orthodox, cults, Protestants, they all believe in deity, death, and resurrection. What separates the people who have eternal life from the people who don't are those who believe the promise that Jesus makes in John 3.16. Right. That the one who believes in him will never perish, that whoever believes in him will never perish, but has everlasting life. So Brittany goes on and said, I just wanted to point out there isn't one Bible verse that plainly states you have to believe that. In other words, she's saying there's not one Bible verse that says you have to believe that you get an irrevocable salvation, that you get everlasting life that can't be lost. Well, you and I are going to talk about that. But before I go on, she goes on to say, I do not believe that you can lose your salvation, but I think that lots of people are confused and think you could lose it for various reasons. And she thinks that people who think that you can lose it still are born again. Because they believe either in the DDR or the he died for their sins. I'm going to say something before we go on, Bob, yeah. about this. What's interesting about this, because we talk about this in our classes, in our Zoom classes yeah. and stuff. It's interesting, Brittany's viewpoint here and others, that you don't have to believe that he gives you eternal life. But in my experience, they either never or very, 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 very rarely say, well, what do you believe? What is it that you believe? Like she mentioned, there's people who believe they can lose their salvation, but they're saved. So so what do they, I guess they would say, well, as long as you believe that he died on the cross or that he died and rose from the dead, then you're good. Right. Uh, well, she doesn't, I think as an illustration of your point, she never says what you really need to believe. Right. She's just questioning me, and she's saying there's not a single verse, and we'll go to that in a second. But there are several ways. Some people say the deity, death, resurrection. I've read some what Mike Lee would call flexible 
free grace people who say, if you believe that Jesus was sent from God, then that's sufficient. You're right. born again. So as long as you believe God the Father sent the Lord Jesus to and, earth. And they would say, I'm assuming, at least some of them, you don't even have to believe in the deity in that case. He was sent as a prophet. Right. Right. You right. Know, he was the greatest prophet who ever lived. I believe God sent Jesus Christ, and he's the greatest teacher, greatest example that the world has ever seen. Right. And a lot of these people, and you and I have talked about this before, say, well, you need to profess that you believe in the deity of Christ, but that doesn't mean you have a grasp of it. Right. In other words, I don't think any of us fully understand the union of God and man in one person called the hypostatic union. And we don't have our Christology is not perfect, you know, but what a lot of these people will say is as long as you profess to believe in the deity of Christ, uh, I was listening to a guy recently who's a modalist. He believes Jesus is God the Father and Jesus is God the Holy Spirit. And there's only one person. And he has three names. <laughs> right. He manifests himself in different modes. Right. Right. So when he prays to the Father, he's praying to himself. Right. <laughs> well, in my opinion, that's heresy. But do these people actually believe in the deity of Christ? Yes, they do. Right. Please plan to join us at Camp Copus in Denton, Texas. The Grace Evangelical Society's 2024 National Conference is May the 20th through the 23rd. Good fun, wonderful fellowship, recreational opportunities for the younger ones and the older ones, great teaching on the theme of free grace in the epistles of Peter. There's VBS for kids, too. More information and online registration now at faithalone.org slash events. That's faithalone.org slash events. Please come and join us. But anyway, let's get down to what she's asking, which is, is there a Bible verse that plainly states that you need to believe in a secure salvation? You need to believe in everlasting life that can't be lost. You need to believe in salvation that's irrevocable. Well, I think I could give quite a few. Start with John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but has everlasting life. There's a promise there that the one who believes in him will never perish, which he goes on in verse 17, John three seventeen, to say means to be condemned eternally, but has present tense everlasting life. It's real clear there that what we're believing in Jesus for is everlasting life that never ends. Another example, John eleven twenty five to 27, Jesus is speaking to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he makes two statements of eternal security. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This is a promise of being resurrected into Jesus's kingdom with a glorified body. Then he says, he who lives and believes in me shall never die. Obviously, he doesn't mean physically because he just said believers die physically. He'll never die spiritually. He has everlasting life. And then he says, do you believe this? This is the content of what he says, do you believe? Right. right. And Martha's answer is what we find in the purpose statement of John's gospel in John twenty thirty one. Yes, Lord. And now she explains why she believes that. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come into the world. So to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, in the biblical sense means I believe he guarantees that I will never die spiritually. He guarantees that I'm going to be resurrected into the kingdom. And that's what we find in the purpose statement. These are things I've written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Right. That everlasting life in his name. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You cannot believe that without believing that you've been saved in the past with an abiding result. And it's not of works. It has nothing to do with our works. Diane Boring loves to talk about the bullseye. I guess I think Zane Hodges used that term, and he was saying that everlasting life or irrevocable salvation is the bullseye. Well, for a lot of people, the bullseye isn't that. Instead, the bullseye is Jesus died on the cross for our sins, or he died and rose again. And they get all confused. Another verse I would use is Revelation twenty two seventeen. Right at the end of the New Testament, he says, Anyone who wishes, let him take the water of life freely 
And actually, the Greek there, it's as a gift or without cost. Some translations say without cost. And it's this gift that is irrevocable. And you find it all through the New Testament. But especially, the best place to go if you want verses on the security of the believer, in my opinion, is the Gospel of John, because it's an evangelistic book. Over and over and over again, Jesus associates believing in him with everlasting life. I had an article I recently wrote at faithalone.org, a blog on the nevers in the Gospel of John. He says that the one who believes in him will never perish, John 3.16, We'll never hunger, John 6, 35. You eat the bread of life, you'll never hunger again. You'll never thirst, that's John 4, 14, and it's also John 6, 35. Once you have drunk the water of life, you'll never thirst again. Well, let's see, he'll never be cast out, John 6, 37. He's secure. And what other nevers? I guess uh, he'll never die, right? right? John eleven twenty six. He'll never die spiritually. There's no spiritual death. Uh, Of course, you could also add in, I suppose, John 10, 29, and 30 will never be plucked out of his hand. Right, that's the one I was thinking of. Right, Right? we're secure in his hand. So you have all these verses, and I guess the, the final one... How about 1 Timothy 1.16? That's exactly what what did Paul believe. Okay, so what does that verse say? Paul said that I'd be an example of those who would come, who would believe in him for everlasting life. And the Greek is best translated for everlasting life, right? (laughs) Right. It's not just some made-up translation. And so we're believing in him for something specific. It is everlasting life. What did he promise us? And by the way, you can see in the New Testament, Paul uses the expression, the promise of life. That is what we believe in Jesus for. So, Brittany, I would suggest that you read the Gospel of John prayerfully and ask God, do we really need to believe in Jesus for irrevocable, everlasting life that he promises? And if you do, you read the Gospel of John, you prayerfully consider it, the Lord will show you that, indeed, my assurance is found in the promise of life, and that's the only way a person can be born again. There's no other way. It's only through faith in Christ for the gift of God, which is everlasting life. And until next time, remember, keep keep grace in focus. Be our guest and subscribe to our 48-page magazine, six issues per year, also called Grace in Focus. It's free by emailing your name and snail mail address to ges at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. If so, please send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. And when you do, please make sure your question is as succinct and clear as possible. That would be a great big help. On our next episode, what are the essential elements of the gospel? Please join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The preceding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.